Oh, let me try that again with, this, with the microphone on. Good morning. Good morning. I am really excited because I get to wear a costume to church today. Today we're starting uh, our series on Star Trek. So, but I'm only going to wear this maybe once or twice. I'm not going to wear it every week. But um, I tried to get Annette to dress up like Lieutenant Uhura today, but she wasn't buying into that. Don't know why. Hey, a couple of announcements. First of all, you know, we've already given $300 to Coalition of Care this year, and this is the first month, so you guys are really hitting it out of the park. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, if you think of it, and I think we have Frida's address. If not, we can get it. But Frida's having a birthday uh, tomorrow, but we still have time to get a card in the mail to her if you'd like to do that. Uh, there's some Star Trek trivia below the uh, uh, Bible study questions. Um, kind of interesting. There was actually a, a NASA astronaut that played on one of the Star Trek shows. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, we need some volunteers. We have two, but we need two more to help Mary with um, uh, junior church once a month. So if you're interested... Uh, let Mary know about that, and then I wanted a sign-up sheet. Oh, I know what we're going to do. We were talking about starting a bell choir up. So if you're interested in bell choir, uh, we're going to have a sign-up sheet in the Narthex for you, uh, and it does, it's not a contract. So it doesn't mean if you're interested and you sign your name, we're going to hold you to a six-year contract or anything like that. But if you're interested in finding out about Bell Choir and what that might look like, sign up and uh, Lexi or I or somebody will get in touch with you and we'll, we'll get together and, and see what that looks like. But I'm hoping that this year, maybe, if we get started soon, maybe for Easter we could uh, do something with the bells. I think that'd just be cool. January 10th, so Tuesday at 6 p.m. is trustee meeting, and this Friday, the uh, Friday the 13th, right? 6 p.m., we're going to have our Friday night frenzy down in the fireside room. So if you are, a, if this is going to be your first time, you're our guest. Don't worry about bringing a covered dish or anything like that. Uh, if you've been here before, then y'all know the, the, how to do that, right? Um, Bob is counting on somebody to bring potatoes, though, so I'll just let you know that. Um, any other announcements? Have I missed anything, Cliff or Debbie? Okay, at this time, I'm going to invite you to stand for our call to worship, please. call to worship comes to us from Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in his safety and delight in him, and he will give us the desires of our hearts. Commit our ways to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will make our righteousness shine like the dawn, and the justice of our cause radiant. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when the wicked scheme and succeed. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath, which leads to evil. The days of blamelessness are known to the Lord, and their inheritance is forever. Amen. Let's sing Christ for the world we sing. No, we're going to sing Where He Leads Me.
Please be seated. So before we get into uh, pastoral prayer, I want to uh, let you know we have a, a guest with us today. Kathy is visiting. She's been visiting with us online, but she's here, so I would invite you to welcome her at the end of service. And it looks like Natalie has a few friends. I just want to say welcome. Um, if you're looking for different, you've found it. You have a pastor with absolutely no musical talent whatsoever, and you'll notice I turn my mic off when I sing. No one has ever asked me to sing for them. Um, so uh, welcome. I'm just excited, very happy to have you here visiting with us, and hope you find something here that you like. But what is on your mind this morning? What prayer concerns, what praises do you have that you'd like to share? Todd? Okay, we want prayers for Ruth Ann, who has uh, breast cancer and having a mastectomy January 25th, and we want to keep her in prayer. Bob? Okay, and you have a blanket from, from the quilting group, so yeah, that's very nice. Um, thank you for that. Um, oh, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, back here. Yes, we're going to, we're going to lift up your grandpa. Malachi, what you got? Pray for your dog. Okay, we can do that. You know, pets become a part of family. Pets aren't, pets aren't just animals. Pets, pets become, they're part of us. We want to lift your pet in prayer, your dog. And then I saw Natalie's hand up. I just want to say blessings, you know, for God providing new friends and my cousin coming to visit. She's coming to the mountains and everything. Absolutely. I've been through those mountains, and it's not, uh, I came through on a, a downpour once where you can't see very well. That's not fun. So we're glad you're here. Welcome. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, we had one of our church members, if you're watching online, I know you can't always hear what's going on here, but uh, we had a, a, one of our church members pass somebody on the road who had been um, in distress and uh, stopped to help, um, but the person was on some kind of substance, so uh, we want to lift that person in prayer. Uh, I do have a praise. Uh, I ask that you pray for my friend Bob a few weeks ago. He had had uh, a report of cancer on the lung, and they did some other testing. They found out that it is not actually on the lung. It's outside of the lung, and it's a mass that they feel they can take care of. So that's a praise. That's good news. He doesn't know until, I think, Tuesday what the actual treatment is going to involve, but uh, excited about that. Uh, we want to lift up David, uh, Mary Beth, Adam, uh, Jennifer and David, whose um, mother, wife, passed away, uh, I think, December 23rd, and we want to keep that family lifted in prayer going forward. We had the memorial service yesterday. Mike? Mike had a childhood friend who we've been praying for, and he passed away Friday, so we want to keep that family lifted in prayer. And Mike. Yeah, it's, it's, so here's the problem. When we lose a loved one like that, 
um, we grieve. But this is a celebration of life for a life well lived and a celebration that the family knows where John is today. You understand that when we close our eyes that last time here on earth, before those eyelids even slam closed that last time, we have opened our eyes into the face of Jesus Christ. So that is a praise. Um, Not to say that we don't grieve, because we do. We still experience loss. But we also mix with that uh, great celebration. Any other prayers? Bob and then Ruth. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Damar Hamlin. I um, mean, that's a huge praise. I saw this morning that he, is, he has been posting on Instagram. Um, so i thinking that there's some healing going on there. I don't, I'm not an Instagram fan, but hey, you know what? It means he's, he's doing okay. So that is a definite praise. Ruth? You know, and that's a testimony, yes. Uh, all the players and coaches and, and fans and everybody that either gathered around physically or even praying long distance, lifting him up, that is, that is, for me, that's a sign of what prayer can do. So let's do that right now. Let's take our prayers to God. And I want you to think about this this morning. Think of your prayer going to the very gates of heaven and being welcomed in. Let's pray. Lord... We thank you so much for this community that we get to worship together. We have the, the ability, we have the freedom to gather, and, and it's not about a denomination, it's not about um, a church building, it's about a group of people bringing prayers personally to the very throne of Jesus Christ, into the throne room of grace. And Lord, you've heard our praises this morning, you've heard our prayer concerns Lord, we just ask that you accept our praise, that you accept our worship and our thanks for all that you've done for us, those mentioned and those held in the recesses of our heart, those unspoken prayers. Lord, we ask that you would take those prayer concerns and that you would answer them according to your will, your purpose, and your pleasure. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, praying the prayer that he taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I do have one additional announcement before we go to our doxology. Uh, We just had our first Sunday school in several years, probably, since uh, Craig was able to lead it. Uh, We're going to do it again in two weeks. Uh, This morning's lesson was uh, in response to a DVD that was put out by Francis Chan. He's one of my favorite authors. Uh, The book that we're doing this from is called Crazy Love. It's, it's really wonderful, um, and we're going to mix that up possibly. I'm, not, I'm waiting for some direction from the, the people who were there this morning. Uh, we'll probably mix it up with some other teaching and, and things along the way, but um, real excited about it. So mark it on your calendar. We're going to start at 945, and we finish at 1015, unless somebody needs to come back and run in and remind me that we've got a worship service we're going to do. Uh, so look forward to you being able to be there for that. Uh, at this time, I would ask you to stand for our doxology, please. Lord, we thank you so much for the gifts you've poured out on us. We ask that you would bless our offering, our tithe, and our gifts to you for your purpose and your pleasure. 
And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. So one of the questions this morning that we, we did talk about in Sunday school is, how do you picture God? Um, is, is God this immense power of unimaginable, you don't know what God looks like, or is God a friend? Do you picture God as a father, um, almost like a Santa Claus with a gray beard and, and you know, old-looking guy? Is, is God's spirit, uh, is he a cloud? Uh, what does God look like to you? How do you pray to God? What's the, when you see God for that first time, when you get to heaven, what are you going to say? What do you think? What are you going to say? Thank you for all you've done. I don't know about you, but I think, Malachi, what do you think? What would you say? Thank you for all the food we have. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know where I'd start. I mean, how would I, how would I do that? How would I, I, I think my knees would be knocking. I think I'd be shaking and trembling. I don't know. I, I, I don't picture God. There was a time in my life when I, I kind of pictured God as a policeman alongside of the road with his speed gun, you know, waiting to pull me over. You know, not to say I haven't been pulled over, but it wasn't God doing it. How do we picture God? What do we say? What are we gonna what are we gonna do? Are we gonna jump for joy, do cartwheels? Because there I believe we'll be able to do cartwheels. Right here, I just break my full neck, but what are we gonna do? What are we gonna say? So I want you to think about that this week. Some of us are much closer to God than we were when we started out. I mean, you kids, I'm hoping you've got another 70, 80, 90 years to go to, to think about that. But none of us knows the number of our days. But what's that look like? How do we approach God? And the other thing, to, to kind of close this out, another thought comes to mind is, I want God to create something new in me today. I want something new. I've had wonderful experiences, and it's like, God, I want to do that again. I'm going to change my prayer up a little bit. I did like doing that. But God, let's do something differently fun today. Picture, picture. You know, so you guys, do you kids have bicycles? You all got bikes? But I'm guessing it's just a single seat and a single set of handlebars, Right? Imagine you're on a tandem bike. A tandem bike has one set of handlebars, two sets of pedals, and two seats because there's two people on it. Imagine you're on the bicycle and Jesus is on the front and he's got the handlebars and you're, going, you're on the back seat and you're going where he's taking you. And I picture this that we're... We're in a mountain range, and we're coming down the mountains, and we're doing like the mountains in West Virginia, and we're doing 50, 60, and 70 miles an hour on this bicycle, and because Jesus is sitting in front of us, we can't see where we're gone, and we're scared to death, and Jesus is just laughing like crazy. I want to do that sometime. I want to experience that. So let's think about that this week. Let's pray. Lord, I pray... First of all, before your throne, as I, I don't know what that looks like. I'm excited, though, at that prospect. And one of these days, I'm going to see that. But my prayer, Lord, as we go down the mountain pass so fast, with you in total control, and we are just roaring down this mountain because I want to do something new and crazy and exciting and fun. And I, wanna, I want you to lead us, God. Can we do that? Amen. So our scripture this morning is going to be different. We're going to be in the book of Ephesians. We're going to go all the way through this book. 
and we're going to skip very few verses, but um, typically what I do is we, we do the scripture, and then we start into the introduction and, and all that. We're doing this totally different, so I'm on the front of the bike right now. Please pray with me. Dear God, open our ears to hear and our minds to understand your word for us. Lord, we humbly ask for forgiveness for the past. We ask for strength and patience for the day and bright hopes for tomorrow. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our heart be pleasing to you. Amen. So phrases from movies and song have a way of creeping into all of our culture. And, and a lot of times we use movie lines and we've gotten so habitual at doing it, we don't even recognize that we're doing it. Have you ever said, we're not in Kansas anymore? Have you ever used the phrase, oh, let's just get her done? And I know you've heard, frankly, my dear, I don't give a... Right? You know the phrase... I didn't need to finish it. One of these times, I just, one of the lines I've used occasionally is, beam me up, Scotty, because there's no intelligent life down here. It just isn't. How about, I want to go boldly where no man has gone before. Well, I thought we could have fun with Star Trek. So I want to clarify, there is no gospel in Star Trek, or any other show that we watch. My goal, though, is to take the fun things of life that we enjoy and get a gospel message out of that. I want, to be, I want it to be amusing and, and adventurous, because I believe that God is in all things that we experience here on earth. Jesus said if the children stopped proclaiming him as king, that the very stones would cry out. Well, I believe if stones can cry out and worship God, then God can be found in our imagination. Some people find inspiration, peace, and love and meet Jesus through music or books or art and meditation. There are all forms of creativity. So before you, you bash Star Trek as a religious show, or you take it too serious as being the actual gospel message, I want you to know that it's neither. Okay, it's not either extreme. This is just my imaginative way of bringing Christ to you in, in a different way. A wise man once said, different strokes for different folks. That's, that's it. So it could be said that Star Trek has no relevancy to life today, especially to the teachings of Jesus. But I come back with a counter thought on that. Uh, science officer Spock said, live long and prosper. Everybody that has watched even more than two or three shows has heard that line. Jesus' spin on that was his saying, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I think they say the same thing. Captain Kirk said, go boldly where no one has gone before. Jesus said, go into all the world preaching the good news to all creation. Q said, what you were and what you are to become will always be with you. Paul wrote in 1st and 2nd Corinthians, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the dead will be raised imperishable and will be changed, because if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So let's begin. The first scripture is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. In love, God pre predestined us to be adopted as his sons and daughters through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood, 
the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. And Spock said, live long and prosper. So that's not exactly the biblical translation, but it's not bad. Let me ask you, how would you phrase that scripture verse? Because God decided before we were born with full knowledge, with full knowledge that we would sin against him repeatedly. He knew that Jesus would die for us. He knew that we would be fickle in response, that we would sometimes love Jesus and then sometimes drift away. Yet he decided before we were born to create us anyway. From the best of us to the worst, most inhuman person that you can imagine, God created every one of us. He created us to love us unconditionally. And he, he created us to enjoy his, all of his creation. I think that's live long and prosper. The idea, though, is not, it, it's not just through this life that we live long and prosper. Because life here isn't all sunshine and roses. But God has promised that we would live long and prosper in eternity. Though we're undeserving, verse 8 emphasizes that we aren't given these gifts accidentally. We're given these gifts intentionally. God didn't say, man, I didn't see that coming. You know, God was fully aware of what we would do. He lavished redemption on us through his son, Jesus Christ, through his blood and the riches of God's grace with complete wisdom and understanding. God gave us that. I believe that God knew what he was doing. And we are all part of God's plan. Not only that, but it was with his good pleasure in cooperation with the one who suffered. God didn't do that and then say, Jesus, go. He did this in full cooperation with Jesus. Verse 5 says, It was Jesus' pleasure to grant us salvation and all these gifts purposed by God for us. But wait, there's more. With God, there's always more. We learn the price. You see, there's some fine print here. There's always fine print, right? Now we got to pay for this, right? Verse 6 has the cost to us. Jesus freely gave us that gift. You see, we benefit in spite of our sinfulness through the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And that's a problem for a lot of people. We're used to paying for things. They don't want things given to them. A lot of people are trying to earn their way into heaven. They say, well, it can't be that simple. Because truthfully, a lot of people don't want to be all in Christ followers If we can earn our way to heaven, then that allows us to stay back in our sinfulness. But God calls us to a better way of living, to stop sinning. Those are the rules, though. It's free. We can't buy it. I think that's live long and prosper. The next section is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 through 14. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity 
with the purpose of his will. In order that we, who are the first to hope in Christ, might be the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. So Kirk said to go boldly where no one has gone before. I'm going to take the opposite approach. We are to go boldly where only one has gone before. In that scripture, we learned that we were predestined to be adopted into God's family. We are predestined to receive God's grace. Now in verse 11, we learned that that is according to God's plan. That's all part of God's plan for us, that we who hope in Christ might praise him and bring him glory. But wait, there's more. There's more fine print here. See, contracts, covenants, always have that fine print that you can't even read with a magnifying glass. The thing of it is, with God's fine print, it always works out in our favor. And this is no exception. You see, you and I were included in Christ. Ever since we heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, that's the fine print. We're included in this free gift. All of us who have heard the word of truth, the word of God, have been redeemed. And there's more. We're marked with the seal of Jesus Christ. We're marked with the seal of the king. No one can counter this, the king's seal. We are promised, we're secured, we're guarded by the power of the Holy Spirit, and there's more. The Holy Spirit himself is on deposit for our salvation, our inheritance into God's glory. So listen again to the, the scripture. You were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Gospel meaning good news. So since we've heard the good news of our salvation, having believed you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a, depo a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the re redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Now, I, I'm going to tell you that I have studied Ephesians 6. But the first five chapters, I typically run through. I've not paid a lot of attention to them, and that's, that's not good. It's not good for any of us to have done that, but chapter 6 talks about the armor of God. Everybody's familiar with that, and we kind of speed through some sections. But it's been my mistake. You see, to put this in contemporary terms, I've never defaulted on a loan. I've never had a co-signer who had to pay my debt. If I had, maybe I'd understand what that's like. But the Holy Spirit is on deposit for my default, for my sins. Christ has covered my sins and if I'm deemed unworthy, the Holy Spirit is my co-signer. That's why I say that I want to go where only one has gone before. Quick, mommy's getting away. Boy, he's cute. <laughs> yes.
yes, but no. (laughs) I want to go all the way for Christ. I want to be the person that God created me to be. Knowing that the Holy Spirit's going to make up any shortfall. I've shared this with you before. I want to be running with scissors into a burning building in the path of a tornado for Jesus. I want to be, I want life to be exciting. I want, as I shared with you in the prayer this morning, I want to be that person that is just, Jesus is on the front and we're doing 90 mile an hour down a West Virginia mountain highway on a wobbly two-wheel tandem bicycle with him laughing. To me, that's the reckless that I want to be. To go boldly where only one man has gone before. Listen to this scripture. Cliff? Today's scripture, Ephesians 1, verses 15 through 19. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints... I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparable great power for us who believe. The word of God. For the people Hugh of God. said this, what you were and what you are to become will always be with you. Jesus phrased it a little bit differently. Jesus said, go into all the world preaching the good news to all creation. Now, Q is a character that's a bit confusing to me. He isn't a bad person, but he's far from being a good character. He's kind of like us, really. He's of questionable origin. He holds immense power over time and space. And despite his vast knowledge and awareness, he is a thorn in just about everybody's side. And he enjoys that. He loves looking down on ungifted people and holding himself above others. And I think sometimes we have a way of doing that. So I tentatively agree. I agree a little bit with this statement. What you were and what you are to become will always be with you. Almost. You see, our choices in life, what we have said and done and what we've left unsaid and undone, our successes and our mistakes are always with us until they aren't. The consequences may remain behind. But Christ has taken all of our sins, our unsaid, undone, said and done that have been wrong, those mistakes, all of our shortcomings, and he's erased those. Now, we're still stuck with consequences on earth, but not in heaven. On heaven, the slate is wiped clean. We are pure in Christ when we're in heaven. Listen again. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance. Paul's message to the Ephesians and to us today offers the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, the revelation that we can know God better. Now, I don't want to fully know God. And and hear my reasoning. I don't want to know God completely because that would put me on God's plane or bring God down to me 
and that, no. God is so immense, so amazing, so pure and holy. I want to understand a little bit. And I have questions. I've had good friends who have passed away, and I don't understand. Why them? I mean, some of these guys were, they really got the Bible. They really, they were really in love with God. I don't understand why they were taken. Why not me? Why not some drug dealer? Why, why them? And I don't ever want to hear that, well, God needed another angel. No, God's got hundreds of millions of angels. Why my friend? So yeah, I do want to understand, but I don't. Q is right as far as he goes, but he misses the point at which God enters in. You see, Christ, in him we are a new creation. What we will be is yet to be seen. Paul talks about that in a lot of his writing. It's yet to be seen on earth, but it is known by God. Because he has plans for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans to give us hope in the future. That's a gospel message. It's a gospel message to be trusted. It's a gospel message that is important, more important than any other message you'll ever hear. That God loves you and he has plans for you. God didn't just throw random dice and say, here, create. You are knit together by God. So here are three truths from today's scripture. First, Jesus Christ came that we might experience life and have it to the full. That we would live long and prosper. God has promised to open the storehouse of heaven to bless us. He's going to fulfill our calling to be a blessing to others if we will yet let him. He doesn't force us. Second, we're to go boldly where only one has gone before, and Jesus Christ is that one. Jesus began in heaven. He came to earth to be with us, to show us how, and he modeled living and loving for us. He went to the absolute, the least, the last, and the lost. And that's what he wants us to do. There was no time limit. There was no limit on how far we were to go. It's to share love all the time, wherever we go. And there should be no time limit, no no limitations that we put on that either. Imagine if we were to follow the Star Trek mission with a, a Christian spin on it. To explore strange new worlds and discover grand new truths, to seek out new life and new callings, to boldly follow where only one has gone before. That's a Christian endeavor mission. The third point is the consequences of what we were are useful for our learning, but they're not held against us because what what we will become is unknown. Christ is always with us, and in him we are changed. We are a new creation. What we will become is part of God's plan for us. Live long and prosper. Go boldly where he leads, and be the people that we were created to be. Amen. So what song are we singing now? (laughs) We're going to sing the one that I skipped. Okay. Whichever one that is.
Lexi, I want to thank you so much for doing that and leading us. I really think we can learn this. Uh, we're going we're gonna to try it. And it, Lexi forgot to use two words. It's so far, we are going to do this through the month of January. We'll de determine if we're going to do it for the entire series or not after I see how we do with a few more weeks of practice. But I got to tell you, you know the ladder that uh, we use to put the angel on the tree here, that really tall ladder? I couldn't sing that high if I stood on the top of that ladder. <laughs> so everybody is, in, is welcome and can join me down in the lower levels of that singing um, but you have a beautiful voice. I really appreciate you, you leading us, but um, we're going to try this, and, and we're going we're gonna to do that with other music throughout this year. We're going to try to learn a few, and so we'll stick with them for three or four weeks at a, at a time and see how we do. So what song are we going to sing now? <laughs> uh, we have one more hymn, Just As I Am, uh, number 357. Okay. Th this is one of my favorites, so... Let, let's sing this. Remember, though, even if you have a voice like mine and it's not, you, you don't want to play favorites with any one key, you're going to sing in all of them. Um, remember, you're not singing to one another. We're singing to God. And he loves us to make a joyful noise. Let's join Lexi. Just as I am. So I'm going to share another Spockism with you. Said, what, once you roll out the impossible, whatever is left, even if improbable, must be true. I, I want us to look at God this week. Once we roll out the impossible, even though society and reason and rationale would tell us that God is improbable must be true. God and his word are true. His promises to each and every person here are true. God loves everyone here completely and totally with no strings. The fine print is his love is free. You can't earn it. And we have eternity in heaven with him. We leave this life that's not all there is. We have another eternal lifetime to go. I guarantee it. Lord, I pray your blessing upon this people that they might be your mouthpiece, your hands and feet this week in the world in which we live, and that they would reach someone for you. I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Have a blessed week. Yep, Mike. Okay, so if you need Frida Russell's address to send her a card, Mike has it in the back there. Have a blessed week.